Okay, so we're going to use retouch for me, and you can see that you have some credits available, and I'm going to be using the cloud version. You can do it on device, but my preference right now for the test is cloud. I'm going to turn on the heel, and this will just get rid of any blemishes, as you're going to see on the skin. So I can just pan around here a little bit. A few blemishes, a few little skin spots, and it asks right away, it warns you that this information is going to the cloud and they say they're not going to be using it for anything. So I'm going to give it a whirl here. And again, it, because this is based on the internet, it's doing everything through the cloud. So that's not something that I like, but let's just see what the results are like. And there to get a little flash for the layer, the heel layer, and it did clean up the spots a fair bit. Um, just you can see the before after here. We'll just there's that heel layer that was created. I turn it off, turn it back on. There we go. Now you'll notice there's some little bit of unusual textures in the skin. We'll look at that again in a second. But that's a concern now. You have the dodge and burn capability, so I'm just going to run it again a second time. This time we'll get a new layer with heal and a new dodge and burn layer. And again, it's going off to the cloud to do this. And it takes a second or two because of the internet. So this is where I find thinking batch processing. I'd rather do it on the machine if possible, but it's all based on tokens here for the cloud. There we go. There's the dodge burn layer. Okay, you can see the difference. Did a little bit on that uh, skin discoloration, so that's a good thing. But let's go in and just a little closer look. There we go, before and after. And the heel. I know I've got two heel layers there. I'm just trying to give it a fair chance to see what it can do. So I've used up two tokens already. And again, I didn't purchase this, so it's just a matter of using the free tokens that were available for the test. Okay. Now there are some options. There's portrait volume, you know, there's a series of different things. This uh, does get relatively expensive if you buy all the individual plugins. Here's the results. Again, I'm seeing a few kind of funky things. There's before, there's after. There's that spot. I'm just kind of looking at that, getting a little closer here. Here's our heel. There you can see the before, after. See how it looks like a spot without texture? I'm just going to circle it here. I'll just get my paintbrush. Hold on. Let me just get a nice brush. There we go. And size it down a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to circle some areas that I find looking a little bit different, a little bit odd. Just get some nice bright red so you can see it. There we go. There's that one spot. And uh, you can see the before. There's after. I saw some other spots here on the cheek that had some unusual looks. There's before, there's after. So you can see there's some weird texture here. There's another spot. There's a few. Let me just get that again. There we go. Get that on that layer. Before and after. You can just see that little difference. There's the original and there's the retouch. There's another spot somewhat in here that's got an odd texture before and after. So it does do a you know a fairly good job of retouching, but you can see some of those spots. See how they're kind of hard edged and weird textures. So uh, that's a concern for me. I mean, the dodge burn aspect looks pretty cool, but um, yeah, that's that's the thing that I'm concerned about is some of the repairs. Now, interestingly, that little Mark on the neck never got retouched. Not sure why it passed on it. You can see it's done its thing. 
and some of the skin texture there, so that's good. So there gives you an overall view of retouch for me, again, before and after. And that's with the Dodge Burn and actually uh, two heel layers, technically. There are some areas that did get missed. The forehead doesn't look too bad. That blemish on the eyelid area or on the eyebrow, I guess, is left for some reason. Some discoloration there, some moles and such. There we go. Now I'm seeing it, maybe you're not on your screens because of YouTube, but I'm seeing a little bit of a variation with where these spots were repaired. I'm seeing sort of a hard, faint hard edge. So let's just upload this to Evoto and take a look at how it works using some of the presets. And um, yeah, it's okay. It's before and after. I'm not really seeing a tremendous change. Now, of course, we can go in and make our own settings. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to try the higher quality one. There's natural two. And uh, see how that looks. So still got that blemish. Some marks here. Here's high end retouching. This is again a preset and um, yeah, now it's left a few things. It's cleaned up some others, which is good. Yeah, there we go. So it's got left that blemish behind. That's kind of interesting. Where Retouch For Me got that blemish, this did not, but then I'm not seeing any kind of weird um, artifacts, I guess you could say, or hard edge retouches. Now I can go in and tweak this. There's sliders, of course, which we can do. And that will give us a little more fine tuning and custom. But again, my goal in doing this is just sort of right out of the box. What do you get? If you're trying to do things quickly with retouching, so there's the acne, uh, mole blemish, body blemish, etc. So there's lots of new things that you can do. And they are, Evoto is adding a lot of tools, but again, um, I'm trying to do this as a quick thing, not where I have to make a lot of fiddly adjustments. So there's adjusting the slider. Um, I'll go back to high end, just that's their default setting. And I'm going to be comparing that with Rebloom's fashion just to get a look and just see how things are. Uh, Rebloom does do its own dodging and burning, just like Evoto, just like... Uh, retouch for me. So comparing all three is going to be kind of interesting. So Evoto is doing a nice job. I mean, the acne is getting cleaned up here. Um, you can just see that slider has a little bit of an effect. Freckles is on full. I'll take it down. Um, you know, there's an effect, obviously. But I think the preset is pretty much taking care of most of the settings to get where we want. You can see it's kind of brightened up the skin a little bit in some areas. I'm just going to go to a fit area. You can see before, after it's changed the color a little bit, brighten things up a little bit. That's that high-end preset. So it's interesting. Again, I'll just export it. I'm going to send it back out as a TIFF so we can open that up in Photoshop and then compare them side by side. So that's one thing that's really important when you're exporting what you want, where you're going to send it. Whereas with um, Retouch for me, it was staying in Photoshop. So that was kind of nice. This is, uh, again, cloud-based. It's something you have to buy tokens for. So you're not actually owning it, but then you're paying as you go. So there may be some pros to that depending upon your workflow. So I'll just export it. And it's exporting and coming in, and we'll be able to go back to Photoshop. Okay, so now we're going to use Rebloom, same photo, the original TIFF. It's going to be under my filter menu, Rebloom, Retouch. And you've got a couple of options. There's the natural and there's the fashion setting. And so it, by default, is on natural. I'm just going to switch it to fashion. There we go. I'm using it full strength. 
and of course as it's working you can see there's the before and after so it's doing a similar you know similar thing as the other two um, we're going to see the results but uh, you can see there's definitely there's fashion before after I'm just going to open it up now and it's going to jump over into Photoshop so let's take a look let's get in close we'll do the comparison in a moment but how does rebloom do because this is again right on my desktop and I'm kind of looking for some kind of weird artifacts is there anything there's before I'll just redo it and there's after bringing it back now key thing is with rebloom it's working on the layer the actual layer that you uh, were working on whereas retouch for me creates new layers uh, Evoto, you have to export. So to use Rebloom so I can keep my original and not have it um, work on the original layer, I'm going to have to create a new layer. So I'm going to do that in a moment. But right now, there's that little blemish that we saw. Evoto uh, did not hide. Rebl Retouch for me did, but made an artifact. And Rebloom seems to give a nicer result. Again, we'll look up close at all of these to get a better idea of what we're we're dealing with but you can see the skin before after the blemishes it's keeping the texture which is nice so each one has its strengths I think at this point but um, we haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison so just uh, duplicating the original background layer I'm just going to rename it so that when we run rebloom again we'll be using it on an exact layer rather than like a retouch layer, rather than on the main image. So let's go do that again. At Rebloom, retouch, and we open up our plugin. You'll see it's staying on fashion because that's what I used last, and there it is. So there's the before and the after. You can see now I've got a layer that I can hide and show. So that's good. And that's giving me a little more more the way I want to work because I want to be able to maybe blend or fade or do some other retouching in Photoshop if need be. That little, notice that little mark is still there on the skin. Uh, none of them got it. Not photo, not uh, Rebloom, not Evoto, and not Retouch for me. Kind of weird, but there you go. Okay, let's do a comparison, all three together. This is three up in Photoshop. You can see them. They're labeled here so you get a clear idea. And I'm going to just zoom in and bring them all into the same position. So there's uh, Evoto at 67%, likewise for Replume and Retouch for me. And I just want to match them, so I'll just go under My Arrange and use that Match All. And so that gives me a pretty good idea of the look. Uh, not tremendously different, there's a few little marks. If I just pan around, you can see that that little blemish and that little, um, I guess you could say large pore is a little more visible in Evoto. And uh, let's just match them all again at 100%. Just bring them all into that. There we go. And um, Rebloom doesn't have that. Neither does Retouch for me. Although I was concerned about, so there's that weird kind of little texture in the skin in retouch for me so hmm i'm just going to mark it up here with my paintbrush again just so you can see those areas you might not see them as well in youtube but trust me there are just almost looks like flat spots in the skin is the only way i can describe it so there's one right there uh, there is definitely a few little ones in here and uh, yeah, it's just kind of got some weird stuff there. Not seeing anything like that in Rebloom. And Evoto, well, there's that large pore. It's faint, but it's much more visible in Evoto. And then there's that blemish that the slider didn't seem to make any difference with. So just comparing the differences between the three gives you a better idea of what, you know, what each one of these is doing. Um, your mileage may vary based on your image, but I'm just trying to use an image that, you know, gives us some pretty good idea of where we're at. So looking at the neck here, um, 
Yeah, there, you know, the crease is a little less in Evoto. It seems, oh, there's that mark. Um, it's more visible in retouch for me. Just pan over here a little bit with these images. There's Now there's a little freckle there, but not in the others. A um, little bit of difference in the cheeks. Uh, which one is better? You know, retouch for me seems to have a little more texture, but maybe I don't want that. It depends. Now that blemish or that little, I guess, blemish right there and there and here. You can compare the three and get an idea. I think Rebloom blended it more. Uh, the floor, forehead now, we've got some discolorations. Um, yeah, they're, they're all doing things. They're all doing a little bit differently. So we'll look at that spot. And um, you can see it's a little more visible in Evoto. It's still kind of there in Rebloom. And Retouch for me has some artifacty weird thingies that I'm seeing. There's a weird thing to describe, but some artifacts. So, you know, again, your mileage will vary, your taste is going to vary and how you want to pay for things. Um, the Pro of Rebloom, of course, you buy it if you want to outright, you own it and it's on your desktop. Uh, Evoto, you're paying as you go. Retouch for me, you have the option to go either or pay as you go or again with buying it outright, but all the plugins get expensive. So... It's a tough call, I think, depending on as far as cost, you're going to decide. Now, see, there's that mark, that blemish, and they all three have left it for whatever reason. But they've all done a good job. Uh, for my money, I think I'm going to go with Rebloom. I just like that better. I don't find what Evoto does. There's enough that I would use. Uh, Retouch for me, I'm not really as pleased with the results. You can just look at the chin blemishes. They're a little more visible in Evoto here and a little more visible in Retouch for me. So you can see those little bumps, not as visible in Rebloom and still somewhat visible in Evoto. Maybe you could tweak Evoto more, but I'm trying to get it as quick out of the gate, one click retouching and being able to batch retouch. So they all do it, but it's just, I think a one click solution is, Evo is going to be Rebloom for me. Just bring them all back. So I know it's a long video. Hopefully this helps you make a decision. I'm not going to tell you what you must get, but that gives you an idea of what's going to be, you know, the results of these three. Which one wins? I'll let you decide. Hey.